There's a young man right there who wants to ask the panel a question. Could you go ahead? If you were to have a dream, what kind of dream would you have? Out of the mouth some babies. Oh my gosh. I love that. Who would like to take that on? Anyone want to respond? Jen? Dr. Jen? Murray Garcia, I can start. I'm starting to, she's like family now, and, and I keep calling her doctor, but she's Jan for now. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, um, in the sense of how our country can get along better, I mean, there's lots of kind of dreams, right? I got a dream of the ocean, but okay, that's not what you're talking about. Okay, so um, I think we need to, um, and this goes back to the question about reparations, we have to be very clear about and very honest about the truth of what has happened from the beginning. And to be very practical, and you're going to see in the next couple of years, this um, high school graduation requirement to have uh, completed a course in ethnic studies to have a California high school diploma. And um, that's the beginning of uh, truth, the truth that will set us free so we're not making decisions based on mythology and um, a narrative that is much more informed than what I went to school. Yeah. Anyone else want to respond to that question, that brilliant question by that young king in the audience? Anyone else? What's your dream? My dream would be an educational system that was correct. An educational system that was inclusive. And an educational system, because as long as we're going to work with what we got, uh, my perspective, it's not going to change anything. Because what we do is every several years we go back and we try to do it over again the same way we started to do it that the first time. And obviously there was something wrong because it's We've been going through this for many years, and the African American child is still on the bottom. So, if we were even in the middle, then I could say educational system was doing something. But the uh, our children continue to be on the bottom. So, if we're just going to keep on going back into these schools and saying let's fix the school, but we're not getting ready to throw the baby out with the bathwater, we're going to have problems. Anybody respond to that? I, I, I read, uh, someone said that the poorest person in the world is the person that have no dream. It would be my dream that people would dream and then would work diligently to make those dreams come true. All right, and Calvin wants to respond, and then we're only going to take one more question because of our time. Again, this is a mini panel. We want to do a fuller panel with some of the people up here on this stage. And so I, I can't tell you the cumulative um, brilliance is above them, so I hope you take your advantage and ask a question. He's going to respond to the young man's question. And I, I think you had a, an excellent question. And so I go back to the basics for me, what I would, what my dream would be. Is uh, it's called the golden rule. You know, do unto others as you would have been doing to yourself. And I think that's big. If we could do, if we could get halfway there, it would be something worth accomplishing. Great question. Thank you. And um, I just want to say, does anyone else have any uh, more questions for now? Anybody else? Because we are a little over time. So I want to answer that question too. I have a dream that all of you would learn about systemic historical constructs, policies, and practices that have unfairly privileged my white brothers and sisters to this day. I have a dream that you would read a book and go to communities and see what people who are being targeted who are going through. I have a dream that you would understand that it's not because they're dumber, it's not because they're not working hard enough, because if it was, black people would be the richest people in this world. The Western world's wealth is built on their backs from slavery. I have a dream that you would know that. I have a dream that you would love me and care about me as much as you care about your own. That when you see those babies being slaughtered on TV, that you wouldn't say things like, they shouldn't have stole that candy bar. I look for a reason to justify the injustice and the murder that is being done to many young people. I have a dream. I have a dream that you would understand that we are at the boiling point of a preface 
of having a global situation that is an extreme mess because of the invent of social media. So that hate, those isms, all those things that you're seeing are spreading like the most deadly virus. We are in trouble, and you're talking to an optimistic, positive, loving person. I have a dream that you would understand that regardless of whether you are black or white or brown or blue or my favorite color, purple, you would realize yeah. that you are accountable for people who look like me. You are accountable for people who have suffered like me for centuries. You are accountable to people who have made it so you can have the cushy lives that you have here in Davis and beyond. My people, brown and black, and all people, but my people especially have paid a deep price. And they are dying like flies in 2019. I have a dream that you would wake up and do something about it. And I have a dream, because that's a brilliant question, young man, that we would make sure our babies are getting an equitable education, as Jan and Marilyn have talked about. That we make sure our babies are not being profiled I don't hate all police, I have a lot of them, sheriffs. I don't really hate any of them, I just want them to fix the culture. It's a culture thing where even people of color go into those places and do the same toxic stuff. It's called internalized oppression. For my brothers and sisters of color, I have a dream that you would understand that if you are not aware of the systemic constructs, policies, and isms that are affecting your life, then you are gonna be our worst enemy to our own community. Loving Africa does not mean that you don't love other people. Loving your history and your culture does not mean that you don't care about other people. Society is telling you not to like yourself, your skin color, comping your hair. I'm not against however you want to look like. But if it makes you not like who you are, then I'm against it. I have a dream that all of us will collectively wake up as a community and realize that the love that this purple AK lady, yes. lady has is based on a real love. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough to let you know that I'm going to spend the rest of my waking days fighting for justice, fighting for people's rights to thrive, not just to survive, and waking up my other brothers and sisters who have so much privilege and who are not doing anything because it ain't happening to me attitude, and they're not doing anything and sitting at home comfortable and retired. Folks, you don't have the right to retire right now. This is an all hands on board. It is so yeah. tough out there. And I have a dream that you will understand this, and I know most of you do, so I'm not screaming at you, but I gotta be real with you. My babies, who I love so much, for me, those babies are 35 and under, and they are of every hue. I'm mama to many babies, my white babies, my Asian babies, my brown. I am mama to them all in an adopted sort of a way. But I need you to know that your brown and black babies are suffering the most. They're going through everything that all the other babies go through, but because of that historical stuff, they are suffering. I have a dream that you would come out of retirement, and if you're working, that you would dedicate a portion of your time to do something to give back to our communities. Our babies are suffering. Suicide rates are skyrocketing. Police deaths, and again, I'm not saying to everyone, because Captain Handy is a fine police chief, all right? There's all kinds of good ones out there doing. We had our fire department here earlier. I love them to death. Natalie Corona, who was killed, that sister was going to revolutionize. She had a heart so full of love, sure and I love that. I met her once, and I'm like, oh my God. And they every single one of them love her. So I have a dream, and I'm going to say this, that we would come out of our corners, stop fighting, and sit down and have those hard conversations, whether it's working the police. I was telling my brother Will here, I know that we are going to save people that I love so much. We got to sit down with the people who are willing to sit with us and figure this out. They have the power. They've had it for centuries, whether it's in economics, the court system, education, our political system. I'm sorry, yes, we need to be doing our own thing and by all means do it. But if you stop talking to those people who have so many of our babies, they are going to drown as opposed to just almost sink. So, 
Young men, young king, that's my energy to you. Yeah. Yeah.